What's up? Uh, Aesthet here. So we're gonna talk about a potential volcano eruption near to Kaelir. As you might know there have been a few uh, earthquakes uh, about 3.5 uh, in the near to Kaelir after there had been uh, no activity in the eruption here for a few days um, we started seeing activity of, of uh, earthquakes near to Kaelir. Um, of course it doesn't mean that there will be an eruption here but there are some uh, chances that it, it might and uh, they just released a map of the potential lava flow of what it could look like. <clears throat> so the black dots here are where the uh, earthquakes have been happening. So there, so this model estimates a, a rift of 1.5 kilometer of length and a lava flow of 100 meters, uh, 100 square meters per second, which is 10 times more than in Geldigandalur, which was around 10 square meters. But is, uh, you know, so, so that sounds a, a lot, but actually 100 square meters per second is uh, not that unusual for uh, an eruption in Iceland. So the Geldigandalur eruption was, was puny, was very tiny. So it's quite interesting, let's say, you know, it, it opens here and it's on a slope so most of the lava is going to flow east uh, in this direction so the purple one is the first day of eruption uh, where the lava will flow and uh, then the orange one is the after three days and then lighter orange is seven days and then finally, after two weeks, is the yellow uh, map. And um, it is clear, it's, it's obvious from this map, that the first day is the most significant. And then the increase of the square kilometers um, decreases over time. So between seven days for example and two weeks is not that much it's not it doesn't double in size from uh, seven days to 14 days because during that time um, uh, a lot of lava will just be be um, increasing the height here um, so let's look at the Google Maps I want to see where where this is on Google Maps because the biggest risk here would be the the road to to the airport from the airport to Reykjavik. This is Kaelir and the rift would happen somewhere along here and the lava flow the northernmost lava flow point uh, after two weeks is here and the northern uh, uh, southernmost point is around here so the, the after two weeks it's going to be around this area and uh, so that's still quite a distance from the road I mean if you think about it uh, from one week till was around here and two weeks was around here and then it's just gonna take longer and longer to go further and further so it might um, take quite a while to, to, to reach the, the road but you can imagine uh, when the eruption was hap uh, before the eruption happened here we had no idea where it would come up so it could have come up here in, in uh, March and uh, if it was erupting here in March after, 
after six months of eruption, it could have well um, reached the road. Uh, remember that here we it was a very lucky location because it was in a valley, so most of the lava flow was spent by filling up the. Uh, sorry, it was here. Most of the uh, lava was spent by filling up this valley and then filling up this valley. But the difference here, it's mostly flat. So it's not filling up any valley. It's just gonna spread and spread. And you might guess that this is a, kind of a, a easy path for the lava to go. So that, uh, uh, even though it's it's quite a distance, it, it's it's uh, entirely possibly possible that it could reach the road here. And immediately after the road gets closed, in that scenario, it's going to hit the ocean. And doesn't sound that bad. I mean when the lava hits the ocean at least it's not uh, endangering any infrastructure or houses but the problem with lava hitting the water is explosions and especially gas as you saw in the Canary Islands um, lots of gas hitting and there is also some houses here and here so those are at risk um, and okay the road gets closed for the airport but we have another road through Krisevik and down by Sjöstrandavegur and up again the problem with this road of course it's much much longer and this Krisevik Vegur is not meant to handle the traffic. Uh, not only is it just uh, two lines, but also it's not paved all the all the way. Let's see if I can go to Street View and show you. There's a part that is just uh, small part of it is is like that. Imagine the traffic from. The highway of Regnesbrit going through here, it's just not practical. Uh, uh, they would have to... I don't know if, if the road gets closed, I don't know what's going to happen, but some traffic could be routed here, and some of it needs to go probably through Kveragerði, and, and a much longer road. That's, that's all I wanted to say. I mean, all this is just speculation. I'm not a scientist. I'm not speculative. Uh, I'm, I'm just speculating um, and going over the data that was released in weather.is. Uh, it's entirely possible that um, there will be a no eruption. It's also possible that the eruption will happen in another location, maybe again in Geldingadalur. Um, or or further south, um, we just don't know. So, but it is an exciting time, and uh, uh, at least for you know enthusiasts, of course, not not very fun times for people in Grindavik and Vogar. And uh, I work in Hafnafjörður, so I'm I'm also a little bit worried. But yeah, all right. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.